Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we are going to uh, consider Unit 3, Section 5, which is all about the motion of gas particles. Now here we have a graph that you're going to see a few times over the, the course of AP Chemistry. This is called a Boltzmann distribution curve. And what you're seeing here is the distribution of the rates of the molecules of a gas as you change the temperature. So on the left side here we have a curve that represents 100 Kelvin. And that's very cold. And notice that almost all of the molecules are moving very slowly. There are just a few molecules that are moving faster than 500 meters per second. All of them, almost all of them, are very, very slow. Once you increase the temperature up to 200 kelvins, notice what happens. We have a greater fraction of the molecules that are moving faster. At 500 it gets even higher, a thousand it gets higher. So notice that at a temperature, at any temperature, we have a range of molecular motions. Some are always going slower, some are going faster, but the average kinetic energy, the average speed, is higher when you raise the temperature. So that's why we say, generally speaking, when you raise the temperature, the molecules are moving faster. And that is what we see reflected in this Boltzmann distribution curve. Now, the question, why is the area underneath each of the curves the same? Well, this has to do with the fact that we're talking about the same sample of gas. And so we should have the same number of gas molecules for each temperature. All we're doing is raising the temperature. So we just have the distribution is you know flattened out and it seems to be distributed toward the, the front side much more as you raise the temperature. It's higher velocity. Now, could you draw in what the curve at 750 kelvins would look like? Could you interpolate that and draw that in? Hopefully you could. You can basically just draw it in here in between the 500 and the 1000 temperature curve there and just draw in that Boltzmann distribution curve. Like I said, we'll come back to this a couple times throughout this course. This just gives us a, a way to see uh, the distribution of the speed of the molecules as you change the temperature. Now, when we talk about temperature and heat, we want to remember that these are not the same thing. They are related to each other, but they're not the same thing. Temperature is an actual numerical measurement of the average kinetic energy of the molecules of a material. So this is a phrase that we've seen before already in this course. Average kinetic energy, that, that phrase is interchangeable with the word temperature. So if you see a question that says, which of these samples has molecules with greater average kinetic energy, it's just asking you which one has the higher temperature. That's all it's asking for. In the SI framework of measurement, we measure temperature in kelvins. And as you're aware, there are other units that we use as well, degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, who knows what other units of temperature can be used. Now, the neat thing about kelvins, and this is one of the reasons why we like to use the Kelvin scale, when you double the temperature in kelvins, that shows us that the kinetic energy of the molecules has also doubled as well. So if it goes from 100 kelvins to 200 kelvins, you have literally doubled the kinetic energy of the molecules. And if you double the temperature in Celsius, you can't really say that. So that's one of the neat things about the Kelvin scale. On the other hand, heat, heat is specifically the form of energy that's transferred between two systems at different temperatures. This is sometimes called thermal energy. And we'll talk about thermal energy and heat quite a bit more once we get to Unit 6 about thermochemistry and thermodynamics. Now heat is measured not in kelvins or degrees Celsius. We measure heat in joules. And there is a relationship between joules and, and kelvins. We'll talk more about that once we get to the thermodynamics unit here in, uh, here in the future of this course. So... Let's take a look at the relative rates 
of effusion of different gases. Now, there is a gas law that helps us to figure this out. This is called Graham's law of effusion. And Graham's law of effusion states that the rate of movement of gas particles is inversely proportional to their molecular mass. Now, what that means is that, and this is the equation for that, by the way, it looks a little bit intimidating, but it's not as, as bad as it looks. I'll show you how this works in a minute. What this is telling us is as the molecular mass of a gas goes up, the rate of its motion goes down. And likewise, as the molecular mass of a gas goes down, its rate of motion goes up. So this is basically telling us in so many words that lighter gases move faster and heavier gases move slower. And at some level, I think that makes sense that heavier gases are going to be lumbering along because those are heavy molecules. They just don't go as fast. And lighter molecules, well, they can go very fast. So let's take a look at some of the words here because you might not know what effusion means. We might know what diffusion means. Now, diffusion means going from an area of higher density to an area of lower density, but effusion is a little bit different from that. Effusion is the escaping of molecules through a very tiny hole in a material. So a good example of this is like if you have ever gotten a helium balloon and you know that that helium balloon, once you buy it, is, is floating, it, it looks nice, it's all plump. But you also know that after a certain number of days, in some cases a number of hours after you buy the helium balloon, it starts to get less plump. And sometimes that helium balloon actually starts to sink. It doesn't float as well, it starts to sink. Well, what's happening? Well, the helium atoms inside that balloon are escaping that balloon. And they're escaping through very teeny tiny holes in the walls of that container. Now we're talking about extremely small holes, like on the order of like the size of an atom or not much larger than the size of an atom in some cases. So that's, that's what we're talking about here. The escaping of atoms or molecules through a very tiny hole. And that's how helium, in this case, effuses outside of that uh, balloon. Now, like I said, Graham's Law basically tells us that heavier molecules are going to do this a whole lot more slowly. Heavier molecules move very slowly. And lighter molecules move very fast. And so that's what Graham's Law tells us. And so we're going to work a couple problems here with Graham's Law. And this is the first one. It says, which gas effuses faster, nitrogen or helium, and how much faster? So we have rate of A over rate of B equals the square root of the molecular mass of gas B over the square root of the molecular mass of gas A. I would strongly recommend that you choose the lighter gas to be gas A. That way the math is going to work out. So let's think about nitrogen first of all. Uh, here's the periodic table square for nitrogen. And hopefully, as you know, nitrogen is diatomic. So it's actually N2. And so its molecular mass is actually twice that number. So it's about 28.01. And helium is just HE. It's, it's not diatomic. It's just uh, HE. And it's molecular mass is 4.00. So can you look at those and tell me which one is the lighter gas? Well, it's helium, isn't it? And so that's the gas that's going to effuse faster. It's going to be helium. So we know that much. That's, that's half credit right there. But let's do the second part of it. Let's, let's figure out how much faster. So I'm going to plug in helium as gas A, since it is the lighter gas. And I'll put in nitrogen as gas B, since it is the heavier gas. Now, once again, uh, helium, since it is uh, the lighter number, has to go down here. They're kind of across from each other there on the diagonal. And then nitrogen, the 28.01, will go in the numerator. So we have this. So all I have to do now is plug square root of 28.01 divided by square root of 4 into my calculator. And when I do that, 
I get an answer that's very close to about 2.65. And so this is the ratio. This is telling us that helium gas effuses 2.65 times as fast as nitrogen gas. And that's all you have to do. This equation looks fairly intimidating, but all you have to do is find the molecular masses of these gases and then just plug them in. You know, larger number square root over the smaller number square root and get the ratio. So hopefully that's not too difficult. Let's try another example that is a little bit more challenging. This time we have helium can infuse 2.245 times as fast as a gas with what molecular mass? So this is a little bit different because in this problem, it actually comes right out and tells us which gas is faster. Right? It tells us that helium is going faster than some mystery gas that we don't know what it is. We're trying to find out what is uh, that, that molecular mass. Now, the faster gas is also the lighter gas. So I'm going to plug in helium as gas A, and then gas B, we'll call it X, because I don't know what it is yet. And we're going to use these these values here for our square roots. Now, we know what the molecular mass of helium is, isn't it? It's 4.00, just like it was before. So I'm going to plug in the square root of 4.00 in the denominator down here. Now, I don't know what the mystery gas is. So in the numerator, it's going to be square root of x. And we know what the ratio is because the problem tells us it's 2.245. So that's our, our ratio. So now if we look at this equation, we have a fairly simple algebra equation. If we can set the 2.245 over 1, we can cross multiply. And when we do that, we get a value of square root of x equals 4.490. So go ahead and make sure that that's right as you calculate that yourself. Now to solve for x, I have to square both sides. So if I square both sides, that's going to lift the square root sign off of this. I square this number and I get that x equals about 20.2 atomic mass units. So that's my answer. Now the question doesn't ask me to do this, but I, I could go one step further and try to identify the gas. and my best guess is probably going to be neon because that's a gas that is very close to 20.2 atomic mass units. So notice that using Graham's law of effusion, I can look at the relative rates at which these gases move and I can actually figure out what gas I'm talking about. So a pretty neat little calculation there. I hope you learned something about the way that gases move and the behavior of gases in this section. If you learned something, please give me a thumbs up and I hope to see you in my next video in which we move right on to unit three, section six. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.